Well, as I talked about at the beginning of the show, 16-year-old Sebastian de Leon survived an infection with the brain-eating amoeba, Neglaria fowleri. Well, joining me now to discuss the drug, miltefacin, and the role of Profunda in Orlando is CEO Todd McLaughlin. Hello, Mr. McLaughlin. Welcome to the show, sir. All right. Thank you for inviting me. Yes, sir. Well, let's start out with the events that happened uh, last week. Uh, I take it Florida Hospital for Children contacted Profunda. And can you take it from there? Yeah, they, they gave me a call. I, I was actually uh, on the road at a pharmaceutical con- uh, meeting in Boston. And uh, I got a call from the hospital pharmacist basically saying that they were trying to figure out how to order the product uh, from from our company. And I asked them the question, uh, what is the, the indication for? And at the time, uh, which is very typical, the pharmacist doesn't necessarily know what the indication's for. Um, and I sort of uh, told her that, well, it depends if it's an amoeba or if it's for the leishmaniasis, I may have a different response to how you ordered and how we can get the product to you. Sure. And within about a minute, or so she had confirmed that it was actually for an amoeba patient and um, we just went into interaction to try to get the, the product done as quickly as possible. And I read uh, during, uh, through other media sources it got there in about 30 minutes. That's correct. Yeah, yeah my, uh, my son, uh, who also works in, in the company, uh, Michael McLaughlin, as a uh, operations manager part time, um, was actually uh, just got back from Tampa. Believe it or not, um, <laughs> he's, he's in the reserves there and also went to school at the University of Tampa and uh, has a lot of friends and was in a, a concert the night before. And I wasn't sure he was home or not, but I actually called him and he was just arriving back from from Tampa and had sort of jumped into his pajamas and was going <laughs> to get get rest from the the weekend that he had and uh i told him that no you need to you need to get up we have an amoeba patient and um you need to get up and go so he stayed in his in his pajamas and hopped in the car went to the office got the product and drove to the drove to the hospital so we're about uh eight to ten minutes from the office and about 20 minutes from the uh, hospital fantastic now many people have read about the survival of young sebastian and the drug miltefacin but may they may not understand what the drug is can you tell us a little bit about the drug itself well, the drug was initially uh, uh, developed actually as a as an anti cancer agent for breast cancer, and uh, as as things happened with drug de- uh, development, uh, they sort of discovered early on that it might have some some use, some use as an anti parasitic agent, um, and so uh, they developed it initially for the indication of leishmaniasis. And I'm sure your audience probably understands what what that's about, but it's basically another parasitic disease. It's really the second leading cause of parasitic uh, disease death in the world. There's about 30,000 people a year die of uh, one form of leishmaniasis or the other. But here in the U.S., it's uh, mostly the cutaneous forms that we have. But we do we have seen uh, mucosal forms and visceral forms here as well. Okay. Now, but this is not an FDA-approved drug for um, the free-living amoeba. It's an it investi- investigational still, right? Uh, it, is, it is. Actually, the Center for Disease Control actually has it on their website. Obviously, this is such a terrible disease with, with a 97% death rate that they uh, they were looking for things to uh, give advice to physicians who may come across cases like this. And they, they basically had some work showing um, uh, some, some in vitro data and also uh, just general data um, talking about the um, the use of miltefacine and the effectiveness um, against the uh, amoeba. And they basically said that this should should work uh, well in humans as well. And uh, it crosses the blood brain barrier. It's, uh, you know, it, it quickly does that. And, uh, and basically, it, not only in the in vitro uh, test, but also now in vivo has been shown to kill the amoeba in somewhere between 48 and 72 hours. Yes. So, so timing is really everything with this drug in, tre- in treating uh, the amoeba. It, it's everything really. The, uh, the 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 longest that someone has actually uh, waited was uh, uh, that that basically didn't have any uh, brain damage long term was uh, Katie Hardig in um, in the Texas area I believe Arkansas that, Arkansas or, or sorry Arkansas yeah. a case um, that went for about sixty six hours before she got uh, her treatment and, and uh, ended up doing okay and she was in a coma for for quite a, a longer period of time and yes. uh, as, as a result had a longer recovery but basically made a full recovery. 
this this patient was actually the first patient ever. Um, a lot of people don't know Impavito is not an IV product; it's actually an oral drug. And um, the, this patient was actually able to, with a glass of water, take his first dose on his own. Oh, excellent. And that's really never happened before. Well, that's that was really quick then. Yeah. Yeah. So once once we heard that, we knew we had a, a fighting chance to uh, at least you know if the drug was going to work. That um, that was we we knew we had a chance. Excellent. Now I read that. Profounda, this is your company, um, yes. it has a consignment program with several hospitals. Um, how, how does that work? Um, so, I mean, the, the product was launched in March. Um, I, I got introduced to, uh, and again, our focus at that time was focusing on the indication for leishmaniasis. Right. Um, and um, around April timeframe, um, I connected with uh, Jeremy Lewis from the Kyle Carers organization. Yes. And then shortly thereafter with um, with Steve and his organization. And uh, they sort of made me aware of what, of what they were doing. And I said, well, again, time matters. Maybe there's a different way to look at this. And in the pharmaceutical industry, you you, you have to make um, usually about 100,000 doses of a product just to show that you can manufacture it consistently. And so what would happen is, you know, because we're only talking maybe – less than 50 patients, but probably 30, 40 patients per year, um, you basically make 100,000 capsules, put it in the warehouse, and then when you're done, you throw away 99% of them um, because obviously you don't need that many. So my thinking was rather than having the product expire at the warehouse, um, if it's going to expire, let's, let's make it expire in the community itself. And so we basically came together with this basically no charge consignment program. If we, any hospital that wants to have it can have it. Uh, we have seven hospitals right now that have signed up at uh, three or four days ago. We had five and three months ago we had zero. Um, we, um, are they all in Florida? Are they all in Florida or are they spread out? Uh, no, there's two in Florida. Two in Florida, actually. Orlando was the last one to to get it of that seven, and um, there's two in two in Florida, one in Tampa. Actually, the uh, the VA center there in Tampa has it. Okay. Um, and um, two in Texas, two in South Carolina, one in North Carolina. And okay. then we're talking we're talking now to uh, other in, under other institutions now as well. well that's fantastic. <laughs> what we're trying to do, actually, is using the. Uh, associations and, and the connections to actually try to get hospital systems to to get the product and we're trying to educate them that you know not having just at one place within the hospital system we wanted to have as many major centers as we can so that you don't have to drive the product um, we, we uh, you know we we're, were lucky that in in the case of Orlando we would just happen to be here um, and we could actually get the drug to them quickly but to be honest with you I, I, it would be nice if we didn't even waste 30 minutes of time sure. you know how, how much time do you want your amoeba to be eating your brain before you start treating it right and to me 30 minutes is too long yeah I, I think we had me and you had an email exchange uh, about a month ago about the South, right. Car- South Carolina case and you said right. that it took six hours to get it up there it and, took six hours to get it up there after they figured it out, and and right. um, we still had to wait for the courier for an hour or so. Sure. And um, so it it, took, it, it, it makes took you wonder, long. right? You know, it does. Yeah, it does. I actually talked to one of their family members today, to be honest with you, and uh, it's still it's still heartbreaking that sure. you know you, you can't save everyone, but uh, I think if we can increase the awareness, and I think um, the fact that we've had a success now, um, and we're getting some national coverage and coverage on, on shows like yours, that hopefully we can increase the awareness to the point where. Uh, when you hear about, I have a stiff neck, I have nausea, I have vomiting, I have uh, sensitivity to light. Uh, in this case, the, the boy actually had sensitivity to touch, which was actually, I hadn't heard that uh, mm. that sign before. Um, and um, if you hear those things, and I think we need to check, and actually in the, the Florida hospital, they actually had changed the procedure so that if they if they hear that, they now ask the question, and have you been exposed to fresh water lately? Sure. Um, and you know, as, as you as you know, with this particular amoeba, uh, it, it can come from fresh lakes, but it could also come from a slip and slide. We had a patient uh, uh, there that basically got infected that way. We can also get infected through the neti pot right. that many people use for nasal cleansing. So um, you know, we're we're optimistic that now that the awareness is starting to increase, we can get you know more of these locations that will have the product we are working hand in hand with the department of health here in florida but also with the center for disease control so we are sharing the list of where the um, hospitals will have it so that not only do we have the information but the cdc will as well well great well thank you todd mclaughlin for coming on the show and uh, thanks for the great work that you're doing all right thank you so much and i appreciate uh, everything you're doing as well you bet thanks all right